Uh, so let's have a look at the Elgamo encryption methods and how it works. Uh, Elgamo is a public key encryption method where we have a public key and a private key. It's often used to sign for things where we sign with a private key and then we identify ourselves with the public key. So we'll have a look at how it actually works. But what we have is we have Bob and Dallas. Okay, so there's Bob and there's Alice. And what we want to do is to create a private key that Bob uses uh, and then create a public key which is then distributed to Alice. Alice encrypts something, sends it back to Bob and then Bob uses his private key to be able to uh, decrypt the ciphertext. So initially what we do is we create two numbers. P is a prime number and G is what we'd call a generator. Some uh, value between 1 and P minus 1. Uh, it, the two uh, shouldn't be called prime. Uh, so the, the two, the generator value it needs to be selected carefully. So I have a lecture on selecting the G value here, but uh, P has to be a, a prime number. So the first thing we do is that we can't, we, we determine our, our private key as a random value X. So let's take a random value of uh, one, five, nine. And we'll take a prime number of 5077 and the G value of 4851. The first thing we do is that we calculate G to the power of X mod P. Okay, so G is 4851 to the power of 159 and then we'll take the mod of our prime number there. So the value of Y in this case, when we do the calculation, is 4488. Okay, so that's that's the f uh, uh, that's generating the y value. Uh, so our our public key becomes the p value, the g value, and the y value. So then that gets sent as p, g, and y to to Alice. Okay, so those those three values are sent over, and that is Bob's public key. His private key is here and has this value. So the value that's sent over is 5077, 4851, and 4488. Now what we'll do is that we'll allow Alice to encrypt something to Bob and then get it back again. Okay, so let's say the message is equal to 51 that we're going to send. So Alice is going to use these values to be able to create uh, the cipher. So she creates her own random number. Uh, so in this case, we'll use a random number of 112. And the random number will go. <laughs> so hopefully Bob, well Bob, doesn't need to know the value of, of k, uh, but it's now going to be used in the calculation. So she calculates two values, so in this case g to the power of k mod, she's going to take p again, so p was what the, what the, uh, what Bob sent, and then b is equal to y to the power of k, y to the power of k, uh, mod take the message and then take a mod of P. Okay, so it's Y to the power of K multiplied by the message 51 and then take the mod of P. So when we do that calculation, so I won't actually go through the calculation here, but in this case we get a value of 4427. Uh, the B value of 4994. This value then gets sent back uh, to Bob. And Bob now calculates the message is equal to our value of B 
divided by, and we have uh, a to the power of x and mod p. Okay, so if we do the maths behind that, uh, hopefully you'll find out that the message is equal to, to 51. So how did that happen? How were we able to do that when we didn't know the value of k? So I'll just show how that happens. From there, remember we had this value here. So we'll just remove that one. Okay, so the value of b was y to the power of k m. So we'll forget about the, the, the mod p uh, part from there. So, sorry, uh, y to the power of k m is our b value, and our a value is g to the power of k. Uh, g to the power of k to the power of x. Okay, so that is then equivalent to y, which is g to the power of x. Okay. Yeah. Times the message divided by g to the power of k the power of x. So the one thing we know about logs is that g to the power of x to the power of k is the same as g to the power of k to the power of x. So that cancels with that and we end up with the message. Isn't that wonderful that uh, we had that value of k that Alice used but it just disappears because of the maths and it Okay, so by taking the b value and dividing it by the a value to the power of x, we end, actually end up with, with the message. Okay, so the one little caution is the g value needs to be selected properly. Uh, uh, it's often a prime number, just to make sure that, uh, that, it, that it will work. But that's the way that L gamma actually uh, works. Okay, so I hope that made some sort of sense.